A dirty or worn bottom bracket on a bicycle can be a major source of friction or additional mechanical resistance. Against this extra friction you need to exert additional pedaling force in order to get going. This is completely avoidable if the bottom bracket is well maintained and most importantly is clean. In this video I'm going to share with you what's involved in servicing a threaded bottom bracket set. 2016 Norco Threshold Aluminum on display here. And as I go along we'll discuss with you tools for removal and assembly and options for tools as well as the steps that are involved, the components that are involved, despite the warning that it says do not disassemble, to what degree could it be disassembled in order to clean it to lower the friction in the drivetrain system. So all this is coming up starting with pointing your attention that this is not a training in how to be a mechanic. This is a show and tell. I'm sharing with you what's involved in the job. What you do is up to you. I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. That's for you to figure out. So let's get started with the bottom bracket warning as well as a few things on it. This one is the right side bottom bracket and has a directional arrow on it. This is a bottom bracket RS500 and this is also printed on it, probably the thread pitch here. The thread pitch is a fine thread pitch, so cross-threading it into the frame is a real possibility. So, clean the bottom bracket's thread, clean the thread in the frame, and make sure when you put them together they are very, very accurately aligned, because if you strip the thread on this one, or on the frame, that's going to be painful. The directionality here is important and I'm going to rotate them the way you see it on the screen in front of you. So left side here and right side here. Now when the bottom bracket is assembled and you straddle the bicycle you look forward in this direction my index finger is pointing you look down the left bottom bracket with letter L on it should be in front of your left leg and the right in front of the right. When the bicycle is oriented correctly not upside down like this. So right now the right side fits here there, and it's not only a fine thread but also the thread is cut in two different directions on the left side and the right side. So because one of them is left thread, the other one is right thread, if you're trying to put the it will they will only go in one configuration together. But if you're trying to force the wrong one on the wrong side and uh, you strip the thread, like I said, that's gonna be costly or painful, or both. This bottom bracket assembly has three parts. Directionality is also marked on this plastic sleeve in the middle, and this is just a spacer sleeve, and this is all it says, it's a Shimano component. It, the plastic sleeve can be either which way, it doesn't matter. Features on this plastic sleeve are two O-rings. These O-rings are in a groove and from which they can come out and they need to be cleaned of course inside and out. The O-rings need to be of course without cuts and tears and deformation and everything else. So what they do is they keep the dirt out and I'm trying not to force them because there isn't much lubricant left on them just a little bit from my fingers so I'm trying not to dry rub it against the inside of the bottom bracket housing but they go together fairly simply put some lubricant on it reason for it is again keeping dirt from entering one side and going through the whole assembly whatever contaminating the bearings there are bearings cartridge sealed cartridge bearings inside this part of the bottom bracket as well as this one so I have taken one apart and the other one is uh, kinda somewhat put together so this is the degree to which it could be disassembled only the cut all in the cartridge bearing it's a deep groove ball bearing set 
single row, very straightforward. But this is how it looks like when it's when it comes out of the bicycle. What's involved here is uh, this component. This is a plastic spacer that looks like this when it's clean. Just for contrast, this is how the dirty looks like just next to it. Okay, so this is the dirty one. This is a, some additional crunch in the system that is problematic or that causes some extra effort to be wasted because you're on the crank set which is coming up later so in the crank set you have your crank shaft here in the middle the shaft is running through this plastic spacer here so any dirt this spacer is rotating with the inner ring on the bearing and so any dirt on the inside of this is going to rub against whatever else is below it an o-ring a special shape seal there so if this is dirty it's causing extra friction and it's really easy to remove it and clean it underneath this is a another rubber seal which can be removed fairly simply just give me a sec here there the seal has a metal backing like so and some features made out of really really soft rubber here maybe maybe my finger is too big how about this way okay so this is really soft pliable rubber and it should also be not torn it should be fresh and pliable like this dirt gets into the groove here as well as as well as here okay there so this can be cleaned with some great care if it's torn bent and it doesn't seal against water because the bottom bracket is so close to the road in uh, bad in uh, bad weather this gets uh, se severely contaminated that's exactly what happened to the other side bottom bracket so once the plastic trim and the seal is removed you can see a set of ball bearings now look at the difference between the left and right side they were mounted on the same bicycle have exactly the same number of crank turns on both of them one of them is severely contaminated this one here you can see the black the grease with which the bearing is filled is fully contaminated the other one is reasonable the difference between the two of them can be felt easier than heard but I will so this is the good one I will hold it against the microphone so there is some looseness in it it's trash but it's reasonable let's see so that's the right side All right, I'm going to just put it there the left side with the dirty grease in it it's not only dirt that gets into the grease here but uh, the dirt of course is abrasive the abrasive particles wear away the running surfaces inside the bearing this is also trash as is this is crunchy it's really really I know it's difficult to hear it it's easier to feel it this is just crunchy as it rotates so this is trash it needs to be replaced now if you so this is the degree to which they can be disassembled at this point it's obvious that this bearing needs replacement so depending on your market availability this is a press fit bearing and at this point you need a procedure if you want to remove just the ball bearing set from it with a bearing puller that removes the bearing without damaging the housing and also 
needs tools for installing a bearing for an outside interference situation here which means that the bearing is really tight towards the housing so that's uh, how, that's what it means it's uh, interference to the housing so and the inside where the crank goes through here the crank shaft goes through here there's a little bit of gap that little bit of gap is taken up by the by this spacer so at this point this is of course fresh and uh, for removal and assembly this park tool could be used one option of course if you want to go stone age on it you can just put a big pair of uh, slip joint pliers on it or vi or uh, vice grips or a pipe wrench but of course that's gonna damage the nice finish on the surface this is aluminum really soft I recommend that uh, that you find the properly fitting tool for it especially that even if you take the bottom bracket off with uh, some crude pipe wrench installation needs a properly fitting tool and a torque wrench a torque wrench a big enough torque wrench that is able to tighten this to I don't know 30 newton meters of torque whatever I'm gonna look it up or I'll ask a bike mechanic and we'll post the number in the I'm gonna look up actually Shimano's website and we'll post the number on in the videos description box below okay so this tool is really it can be bypassed but for installation I strongly recommend that you have it this happens to be bottom bracket bottom bracket tool BBT 19.2 okay so this one just took it out of the package so that's for removal and assembly and of course for removal I have a long like a re really long a two foot long breaker bar so proper tools for this um, bottom bracket removal is critical as well as alignment and directionality so that's how the bearing looks like I have some bearing replacement in f ahead of me now let's talk about the crank set a little bit the crank set of course looks like this and uh, it needs to be removed from the bro bo sorry the bottom bracket assembly so crank set removal starts with removing a plastic plug that's right here in the right side crank arm what I'm holding is my special tool that fits this purpose looking like this of course this is a cold chisel and is just uh, stone age fitted there into that hole somewhat straight and I'm using that somewhat very guardedly but of course it does it does the job and because this is a plastic plug an easy to replace plastic plug I'm not too concerned about the plugs internal teeth or condition however a plug needs to be in place here in order to keep the water from corroding this section of the pipe from the inside two bolts need to be taken out from this which also need tightening to exacting specifications the torque is listed on the crank arm in this case there 12 to 14 newton meters of torque for these bolts the bolts were also super dirty and the two bolts go through this small plastic item which is in between there okay you get the idea at this point the crank arm can be pulled off the crank shaft and this is how the crank shaft end looks like it just pulls out from the bottom bracket very straightforward now I want to show you that this way of course without the spacer this is loose and wobbly 
so it needs the spacer to be nice and reasonably tight fitting so any dirt between the spacer and the crankshaft is gonna cause friction against which you need to exert extra force to get going and any dirt on this plastic sleeve rubbing against the rubbing against the seal that's here covering the uh, set of uh, ball bearings is again extra friction there so that's how these rotate this is interference fit to the outside to the housing and needs to be and this is another video what uh, some of the options are in this bearing removal in this housing how this can be done and installation removal will involve hitting the inner ring by the edge of it which places strain on the cage that's inside and on the rolling elements so once it's once it's being hit on the outside here this is really cannot this is going to deform enough that it's not going to be reusable so that's how it removes by forcing it out in opposite direction it went in by the inside ring and how it installs is it needs to be forced in from the outside with a properly fitting I'm just so this is just a shape here by a properly fitting tool that taps it in place by the outside ring this is a little too big okay but you get the idea or you can replace this as one part depending on your market and what's available so press fitting this bearing could be done with simple tools if they are the right size repacking this bearing and washing out this contaminated lubricant is really not worth it there's enough wear in this of, of course depending on your market reality and budget conditions but there's enough wear in this bearing that even if it's repacked with uh, fresh grease it's gonna be rotating happily and whatever it's gonna be rotating uh, with uh, less precision than previously so there's gonna be a little play on your crank set a little play this way I'm exaggerating it vastly just to make a point if you have a worn bearing so I hope that makes sense that's basically what's involved, involved in terms of tools and considerations take care of your bottom bracket stay safe